Hey guys, David Stewart here. I am doing uh, the long-awaited review of this particular guitar. This is the Godin um, Multiac Grand Concert Duet Ambiance. Okay, so that's a whole lot of words for this particular model. Um, what you need to know about it is that this is a guitar in what's called the um, Multiac series by Godin, which is a Canadian guitar manufacturer. Um, all of the guitars in the Multiac series are going to have a really similar appearance and um, functionality uh, that is like this guitar with a couple of exceptions that I'll talk about. Um, all of them will look like this. They are um, essentially um, electric acoustic guitars or acoustic electric, uh, acoustic electric guitars. Um, I might invert the two words because they are more, I would say, electric than acoustic. Um, however, uh, they still have quite a bit of um, acoustic presence uh, to them. So um, if you get one, uh, one of the things I was surprised about with this guitar is that um, it's actually quite loud acoustically, um, despite not having a sound hole, and it actually has some really good acoustic tone to it. Um, but all the guitars in the series are going to have the same setup. They're going to look a bit like this. What's going to be different with uh, the guitars are, is going to be the neck width. Um, the electronic setup that the instrument comes with and uh, whether or not it's a steel string or a nylon string guitar. Um, so this is a nylon string guitar, otherwise known as a classical guitar. Um, they do have similar models that are steel string guitars and work in the same manner. They don't have a sound hole. Um, they're still, I would imagine they're still going to be pretty acoustically active because this one's very acoustically active. Um, now for uh, the other stuff in the series, so this is the Multiac series, this is what's called the Grand Concert. Um, the Grand Concert is different from their other models in that it has a full width nut. So this is a two inch nut, which is the appropriate size to play classical guitar on. Um, as opposed to um, some of the other models that they have that have a little bit narrower neck to them. Um, some of the other ones have, there's ones that are like what would be called like a crossover neck, which are pretty popular, I feel like, in, in acoustic electric um, classical guitars. And a crossover neck will have usually a, like a 1 and 7 eighths or uh, even smaller, like 1.7 inch, 1 and 3 quarter inch neck. So um, a little bit closer to a steel string neck. And they make those guitars for artists who are... Um, really accustomed to the size and the feel of an electric guitar or a, or a standard steel string um, acoustic guitar and are trying to add the sound of nylon strings into their, into their sound, into their repertoire and don't want to have to deal with um, a very different feeling left hand. Now I'm on the opposite side of that. I've been looking for an acoustic electric um, or really, I, I mean, a solid body um, electric classical guitar that has an actual full width nut. Um, Carvin makes a, uh, Carvin Guitars down in Southern California. They make a similar model to this. Um, I believe it's called the NS1. I played on them. They're extremely, extremely good guitars. However, they do not offer them in a two inch, um, two inch nut, which means they are not really useful for me. I need an actual classical guitar. So that's what the Grand Concert is. Now the Duet Ambiance, so it's a Multiac, Multiac series, Grand Concert, full width neck. Duet Ambiance has to do with the electronics that are involved. There are two um, sort of uh, sets of electronics you can get when you are buying uh, this sort of guitar, the Grand Concert. The first set of electronics um, is what's what will be called, a, if you get a Multiac Grand Concert, SA. SA stands for Synth Access. And rather than having a regular quarter inch output jack, there will be, in addition to that, a 13 pin MIDI jack um, that will that you could plug a MIDI cable into and then you could plug it into, say, a Roland guitar synth. And I think they're, they've said that these guitars are designed to work with Roland guitar synths um, that will convert the pitch information when you, when, you, uh, when you are playing a note. It'll put, convert that pitch information into a MIDI signal if you don't know what MIDI is, I could probably do a whole other video on it. But basically, MIDI is a digital packet of information that tells another instrument how to produce a sound. And you'll have, um, part of that information will be velocity, in other words, how loud the pitch is, as well as how long the pitch lasts for and what pitch you're actually playing. 
So um, it'll convert all that information into MIDI so you can get some like synthesizer and keyboard sounds. You could even use um, a synth setup to control a more complicated synth as well to, to output that MIDI information to a more complicated um, synthesizer, uh, even controlling something like a, a an analog synth like an old Korg or even like a Moog that has um, that has MIDI access on it. So pretty interesting that you could be able to do that with your guitar. It's an option. This guitar doesn't have it. This is what's called the Duet Ambiance. The Duet Ambiance has a whole bunch of onboard electronics that are designed in a completely different um, sort of completely different direction. Rather than focusing on synth access, this guitar really focuses on shaping the sound of the guitar to have a lot of variability and a lot of presence and to sound really good just by itself. Um, <clears throat> I went with the duet ambiance as opposed to the synth access because first of all, um, if I want to play synth, I can play synth. I, um, I'm not the best keyboardist in the world by any stretch, but uh, I'm competent enough that if I need to add a synth part, I can, I can probably figure it out. Although it is tempting to take the instrument that I'm really familiar with and be able to play lots of cool synth stuff. Um, I don't feel like necessarily compelled to play synth stuff on my guitar. Maybe I'll get one later on uh, because this one has, has turned out to be a pretty good guitar. Um, and instead I wanted something that was really going to function as a good classical guitar. And I wanted it to not only sound good and, and play well, to feel good on the hands, but I also really wanted it to be able to stand up to uh, feedback and be able to operate in a loud environment and have those sorts of options. Um, what I can say about this guitar, I know I've uh, done a lot of explanation for this, but I'll I'll give you the general and then I'll give you all the specifics. Uh, it's a really really good guitar, so it fulfills all of my requirements that I'm looking for with a acoustic electric guitar or an electric classical guitar. Um, I've been able to plug it into my Mesa Boogie and it hasn't really had a lot of feedback except when I'm using like really extreme amounts of overdrive but even with that um, when I'm playing on my lead channel I'm 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 running the amp really hot in order to create feedback on an electric guitar of course you're gonna get feedback on a uh, piezoelectric guitar so it it fulfills all those overall I think this is a really really good guitar um, so let me go into some more specifics with the duet ambiance and uh, talk about what I like about it and maybe the one thing I would possibly change about it um, so first of all, um, when you get the Grand Concert, you are going to get one that has um, a one-piece bridge. Um, one-piece bridge has a, a, its own set of trade-offs when you're dealing with acoustic electric guitars. Um, of course, this guitar is mic'd and pick via a piezoelectric pickup that goes underneath the saddle. And if I turn up the volume on it... Um, you can hear it quite loudly there, but not so much over here. And that's because the pickup is underneath the saddle of the guitar right here. Okay? Um, so uh, the synth access, rather than having this one piece bridge, will actually have separate saddles for each string. And then um, on the electronic section on the back, you can actually um, trim. There's trim pots for each string to just kind of dial it in exactly to the loudness you want. So the, uh, the upside of the single piece bridge is that there's more acoustic activity between strings. When I play this note, I'm going to go ahead and turn it up here. And let go, there's still a resonance of the E string. That's the sixth string still ringing. I haven't played it. Um, that's really good because that means that the, some of the acoustic information from one string is bleeding into the others. That's going to create a more realistic, live-sounding guitar, more like a real classical guitar that you would actually be playing in, in, in a hall. So that's really good. Um, this guitar comes set up incredibly well. All the strings are really balanced. They sound great. Um, there's nothing I would change about the bridge setup. I've had, usually when I get a, a guitar with a, a a piezo pickup, I have to alter the bridge to a certain extent because they never come quite set up perfectly. You gotta file them down or I gotta I gotta tweak some string loudness in there. In this case, there's not a thing to do it. It came perfect right out of the box. Um, but the downside, so that's the downside, is that it's harder to balance all the string volumes. When you have six separate saddles, it's really easy to balance them, but you don't get quite as much acoustic 
resonance between the strings so it doesn't feel quite as alive as with other guitars. Um, the duet ambiance, uh, as opposed to the synth access, has a whole bunch of sound features. So let me go ahead and I'll, I'll go through those sound features. Um, so, first of all, the, like I said, the guitar is actually very acoustically active. Now I have my amplifier mic the amp that I'm playing this through is um, is a Roland Cube uh, 30X, no, 80X, sorry, Cube 80X, which is um, a good little digital practice amp and, and actually is probably pretty good for gigging as well. And it's playing on a jazz chorus sound. There's no reverb, no effects, and there's actually no EQ. It's like right down the middle. Um, what you have, the first slider here, you have five sliders and a s couple of switches, and I'll explain what those do. The first slider uh, controls the volume of the total output. So right here, that's just the acoustic acoustic loudness of the of the instrument. Um, and as I turn up the volume, you can hear in the other mic. That's the sound of the amplifier. Okay. So the first one is a volume knob. You can really control your volume incredibly well and you can actually if you turn it all the way up it, it's pretty hot you can distort certain amps luckily I got a, head, a lot of headroom in all of my amps so that's not really an issue for me but just be aware it could be an issue with you because the output can be quite loud this does this is a whole built-in preamp system um, the next three sliders are going to be EQ that's high end if we um, if we turn down the high end, we get a little bit mellower sound. We can get a really bright sound. Okay. And uh, this one, of course, is going to be mid-range um, in the middle. Mid-range, usually when I'm digging, I like a little bit, little bit less high end, a little bit more mid-range because... Most of the power of the classical guitar is in the mid-range. Um, and then, of course, the last slider is going to be bass. Okay, so you can EQ that any particular way you want to. And the last slider is part of what makes the duet ambiance really special. And I'll explain what that slider does after I explain what these switches do. Okay. So right here with these switches, these are actually a built-in uh, microphone modeler. Um, as you play through these different switch settings, there's a little four-way switch, hopefully you can see it, um, you get a different mic sound. Last blender blends between that mic sound and sort of the raw piezo output. So here's sort of the raw piezo output. Okay. And as we blend it, we get a little bit richer sound. A little bit filtered. And um, I have come to really like a lot of these sounds. I, th I like the closest one. Um, and actually, let me show this to you real quick. All right, here's, um, here's a, a, a view of the manual. Uh, the mic imaging settings, the first one is a Danish Pro Audio Small Diaphragm Condenser. Mic is what that one says. Let's, uh, actually, let's zoom in on that. Okay. Um, Next one over is a Sound Deluxe E47, a Schweppes CM34G. That's actually a really famous mic. But I like the fourth one, which is that at a distance of 16 feet. I usually mic my classical guitars a little further away. So to me, this is like my mic sound that I look for in the studio. gives me a really good um, microphone sound. 
And then the last little switch is a phase switch here. Okay, so those are our four different little um, mic patterns. I really like the fourth one, the, the, the distant mics, because that's really how I like to mic up classical guitar. One of the things that I noticed with this particular setup, um, as opposed to other um, acoustic electric, guitar electric guitars I've used in the past, that is a huge, huge positive. I can't really enough say enough good things about this particular feature with this, is that it, for me, eliminates the need to add reverb to the sound. Whenever um, I've played a, a piezoelectric guitar in the past, I felt like I've really had to add a lot of effects. I've really had to shape that sound a lot in my amplifier or, in, or with a preamp in order to really get the sound that I'm looking for. Um, in order for it to not sound cheesy and really um, brittle, um, there's like a, there's kind of a brittle cheesiness to, to just a piezo sound. But as soon as I start blending it with this mic model, I get a much stronger, um, a sound that sounds much closer to a real classical guitar mic'd the way that I, that I want it to be mic'd. Um, so I am running this without any reverb, and it's the one of the first times I've been able to use a, a piezoelectric guitar, or really an acoustic electric guitar in general, and feel like that I I don't have to add reverb, that I don't have to shape the sound in any particular way. It sounds correct coming out of the amp, and uh, that is something that I think a lot of guitarists would be uh, looking for. Especially because I'm running out of a jazz chorus amp. This is really an electric guitar amp. It's not some kind of specialized acoustic guitar amp. Um, that people people really look for these guitar amps that are like acoustic guitar amps that are really used to shape and deliver this approximation of a of an acoustic guitar sound. Well, what I like about this guitar is I don't have to use those. I have plugged this into my Mesa Boogie over here, and it's loud, but it sounds like a classical guitar, just a very very loud one. Um, when I run this through the clean channel, uh, of course, uh, I, run a, I run a dual rectifier in case anyone wants to know. That's like a very classic heavy metal amp. But it has a really, really good clean channel too and tons of headroom. So when I crank this puppy up and I run it through that Mesa Boogie, that dual rectifier on the clean sound, it's really clean. It sounds very good. It sounds like a classical guitar. And I don't really miss, miss the reverb. The, the reverb in the room from the amplifier being loud is plenty. Um, not that I'm planning on using my Mesa for, for like a lot of classical guitar gigs, but that means that I can use this in the context of some other kind of music. So if I'm, if I'm, uh, playing in a metal band and I want classical guitar parts, which is definitely something that I like to integrate into other kinds of music. Well, that means I have access to it with this guitar without having to bring in some other kind of wacky guitar or amp setup in order to just get an acoustic guitar sound. You can plug this into an electric guitar amp which is it's plugged into right now and you can get just a very very good sound okay so that's a big one that's the that's where this thing really really earns its value um, if you feel like you have to have synth access, you're not going to get access to these sounds. Um, but that's okay. You can still run this through a good acoustic guitar preamp, and uh, you'll probably be able to, to craft a lot of really good sounds with it. But that depends whether you actually want the synth access. If you are someone that's like, I really don't care about having synth access, I want a good performance guitar. And I want something I can play classical guitar very loudly with. Then definitely the, the grand ambiance is probably the area you're going to want to look for. Um, whether you're going to play a, a crossover guitar or a steel string guitar, um, the the grand or the um, the duet ambiance really uh, really delivers an amazingly well crafted sound right out of the guitar without having to alter anything at the amp. Very very impressed with that. Um, lastly, let's talk about some other practical things with the guitar. First of all, this is a um, it has a nice shiny finish. You can see like you can see the reflection of my monitor in it um, so it's got a very nice shiny hard clear coat very durable um, it does have a nice binding this is what's called the light burst finish you can get it in a natural finish that's more like what we were looking at at the like this that's a, the natural finish so the natural finish still usually comes with a gloss and with a binding around the outside um, so you can decide what finish you like and they even it even comes in white 
So you can get it in a nice, like, bright white, which is really cool too. So if you want, if you want that class from an all white guitar, then uh, yeah, you can go for all white, and that's pretty cool. Um, this is actually uh, a year. Uh, this model is a year or two out of date. The new models have a really cool feature. By the way, this is Active Electronics. Um, so there is a battery in here, a 9-volt battery. runs on a 9-volt battery. Uh, the newer models, in addition to having this quarter-inch output jack, um, they also have a XLR output jack. And that means you can plug DI direct into a mixer. You don't have to have like a DI interface to go straight into your mixer, which I'm sure will be... A great idea for like a lot of worship band people that might be out there um, because it's just really good to be able to plug right into the mixer and not have to deal with a bunch of amps on stage um, especially when you can just hear your guitar in front of you and this like I said it does have let me turn off the amp it does have a good acoustic sound to it anyway the new ones have an XLR out but not only can you just plug right into the mixer but if you're running phantom power then the phantom power will actually power the preamp on the guitar and you don't have to um, you don't have to use the battery. The battery won't be used. So you don't have to have a 9 volt battery that's going to be constantly going dead on you. You can, uh, you can just run the power off the mixer, which is great. That particular feature, um, I was okay getting a little bit older model because that particular feature is not one that I'm going to use, but it's an extremely cool feature. Uh, and the reason is because most of the time I'm running any, like I said, a traditional guitar amp. For most of my gigs, I'm not running through um, a mixer into a PA. I'm running through a guitar amp that will have you know CD input if I'm running backing tracks or something like that. That's for most of my gigs. And if I'm running bigger gigs, well, I'm probably still running a guitar amplifier. And if worst comes to worst, I just run it through a DI into my mixer. Not that big a deal. And uh, a lot of the times, I'm using a wireless. Uh, I'm not using wireless for this demo, but most of the time, I'm actually using a wireless. Um, at gigs or when I'm teaching classes or things like that and the wireless well if I'm using wireless There's no point in having that XLR, but I still think it's a very very cool feature other cool features it came with um, the standard uh, Schaller Strap locks installed which come with a lot of Fender guitars. I've been using these for a lot of years I definitely like them. Um, what I like about them is I've never had never had the strap lock ever fail uh, sometimes the nut will come loose, but if you just tighten it down really tight, it, it usually doesn't come loose. But it's very easy to take on or off because it has that nice lip. I feel real secure having, I feel like this guitar is not really going to go anywhere. Those are pre-installed. Love that. The tuners are likewise extremely high quality. They Not only do they look good, but they feel great. They have a great feel to them. This sort of perlite, it's a perlite plastic. Um, it feels good. It's very, very smooth. The tuners have virtually no friction and they have a really good gear ratio. Um, so they're very good compared to most tuners that you're going to use. Are they as good as Gilbert's? The answer is no. Gilbert tuners are what I use on my actual classical guitar. And um, th these are not in the same league as Gilbert tuners, but Gilbert tuners can run between $500 and $1,500 just for the tuners. Let's not ask um, Godin to have one third to the entire value of their guitar taken up in their tuners. These are excellent tuners and they work really well. I don't know what brand they are, um, but I do, I don't know if they're an in-house brand or not, but I do think that they're really nice. They look great and they feel great. I like the matte gold. I like the black. It looks really good. Um, the signature is also a nice little bit and I kind of actually like the shape of the headstock. Um, this is a bolt-on neck, just so you know, this is a bolt-on neck. Um, I don't think bolt-on necks are necessarily bad. I think there's a lot of virtue to them. Um, but some people see bolt-on and they think cheap. Let me be assured that uh, this is not a cheap guitar. It doesn't feel cheap. The bolt-on neck actually feels fine. Since I am never gripping around like this, I don't even notice bolt-on necks on guitars. Uh, some people really notice them. That that's why a lot of people prefer like kind of set neck or neck through guitars when they're playing electric guitars because they kind of feel them up here when they're playing high. When I'm playing high, my thumb is like down here. I don't I don't really notice them. And this neck actually feels good. I kind of like having being able to put my thumb here and and play some high stuff up there. So I I actually really really like the the neck. Um, one thing that I do 
uh, want to point out is that if you are like most classical guitarists, you're probably used to the 12th fret being where the body is. Well, the body does meet the 12th fret on top, and there are dots. You know, if you like the dots, it's got the dots on the top. So I don't really need the dots. I think my classical does have one at the 7th fret for convenience. But if you like the dots, it's got the dots on the side. Uh, but because there's a cutaway, if you're not used to playing with a cutaway and you, you decide, you know, and you, oh, oh, there's no body there. You have to get used to playing without your hand running into the body. That's not a big issue for me um, personally, but it, it might take some getting used to for uh, you. Uh, what else? The tie-ons at the bridge are very nice. I really like um, the, the, the way that you have a really solid piece of wood for the bridge, and then you have the hole drilled in to, to tie them off. At, I think it's a really nice touch. This bolt-on neck does have a truss rod. The truss rod is really useful if you're traveling a lot because uh, sometimes wherever you're at, the neck starts to bow up and then you can just kind of crank it down. It comes with a little wrench to do all that lovely good stuff with. Um, let me think if there's anything else before I get to the last bit. Um, I like the finish. It's got a, a good grain on the top. It is very, oh, it is very acoustically active. It will pick up taps. Um, the, the pickup will pick up the taps, but not terribly loud. So if you're wanting a loud click for playing flamenco, you're probably not going to get a super loud click. I also haven't installed a top guard on this, but I probably will just to protect my instrument when I play flamenco on it. Um, so that is something that you may want to install so you're not tearing up the top too much when you decide to play flamenco. And this is something that I think can be used to play flamenco, amplified flamenco. In fact, I think there's guys from the Gypsy Kings who do use these guitars, so good for them and good choices for you if you choose to go that route. Um, the last bit I will say, the uh, this guitar does have a fret radius. It's a very, very large fret radius. It's a very subtle fret radius, but it does have a fret radius. I believe that fret radius is probably um, a 28 or 30 inch fret radius. It's very subtle. Um, let me see if we can play. You may not even be able to see it on camera. But there is a very, very slight fret radius. That's probably the only thing that would change about the guitar. I don't like fret radiuses on my classical guitars. And given that this is marketed as a full size, full nut whip classical guitar for classical guitarists, it's a little puzzling that they they made a radius fingerboard. It's a little bit puzzling to me. I'd prefer it to be flat. And uh, really, I prefer it to be flat for both hands. The left hand, um, a lot of shapes become easier when it's flat. It's a little easier to reach over with a pinky. Um, and the right hand is also better when it's flat. Um, you really want your fingers to feel like they're in one sort of plane of the strings, um, not having to deal with a lot of radiusing. But the radiusing is very subtle, and it's easily dealt with it's not profound and you probably won't notice it unless you're like me and you're just a stickler for every little detail about a guitar and uh, super judgmental about everything um, so that's probably the only thing I would change but it's not enough of a negative for me to say um, I wouldn't recommend it for a classical guitarist or I don't think a classical guitarist would find value in it I think if you're looking for if you're looking for a guitar to amplify classical guitar music strictly to amplify it and to be able to play it in a noisy environment I think this is probably going to be your best choice for a performance guitar um, you can look at the Rick Turner Renaissance guitars they're excellent but I, what I will say is this I have played them and they are well made uh, but I do not think that they are necessarily more well made than this nor do I think that their sound output sounds as good as this preamp so I really like the preamp on this guitar. I think it sounds really good. Um, in fact, I think it sounds better than the Rick Turners that I've played. Um, that's not to say that the Turners are not good. That just means that uh, I like the sound of this one a little bit better. Um, of course, if you're having if you're having a Renaissance guitar, if you're having Rick Turner make you a guitar, um, obviously you can have him do it without a fingerboard radius or put whatever electronics in it that you that you want and uh, you'll be able to do that. Uh, for me, this was a very, very good, very cost-effective um, solution to amplified classical guitar. It really feels and sounds like 
an actual classical guitar when I play it. And for that, I really can't say enough good things. Um, it definitely meets my expectations there. One other thing I will say, just to sort of um, sum up what I'm talking about. As far as production guitars, I, I sometimes talk about production guitars as opposed to handmade or luthier made guitars. Um, it's not fair to compare this kind of guitar to something that is completely luthier or handmade. So my regular guitars are handmade guitars and it's not really fair to compare, the, to compare them. But here's what I will say. Compared to other production, production value guitars, this might actually be the best one I've played. In, both in terms of, of feel um, and finish, well, it, in terms of the way it feels, yes. In terms of finish, definitely. The details are all there. There's, this guitar is flawless. Um, there's no detail overlooked. Everything on it is perfect. The bridge is perfect. The sound of the of the pickup is perfect. The nut is set up perfectly. The neck set up uh, pretty much perfectly. Um, I will pro I might lay it a little flatter, but that's like a that's a player preference. That has nothing to do with the way it comes from the factory. Everything on it is perfect. Um, it's better than I think. I think retail on this is somewhere in the neighborhood of fifteen hundred dollars. I paid a little bit less than that. Actually, quite a bit less than that, but. Um, for $1,500, you're going to be getting a lot of guitar. In fact, I'm going to say it's probably as good a production value guitar as you're going to get. Uh, if you pay $1,500 for a Cordoba or for like a, a Ramirez or something like that, I, I don't think, I think you might get as much guitar as this, but I don't think spending more money on those guitars is going to get you anything extra than what you get with this guitar. This one is really, really good. Um, and if I am going to compare it to Luther made guitars, uh, I think it. I think it holds up. I think it's a joy to play all on its own. Um, I think it sounds very, very good. Like I said, it does have an acoustic, an acoustic output to it. So if you're looking for a guitar to kind of fulfill both roles, it actually works pretty well as an acoustic guitar in addition to an electric or amplified acoustic guitar. If you were going to own one main guitar that you were going to like, this is going to be my main guitar. I think this would actually be a pretty good choice for a lot of players, especially if you're sort of in the in the mid-range gigging scene if you're playing a lot of restaurants or loud venues or you're playing it in a rock band or something like that um, in addition to, to playing classical guitar there's a good choice i think even without the without the pickup i think i think it has enough volume that it is it is okay and comparable to a lot of production guitars it might be slightly quieter because there's no sound hole but it is surprisingly acoustically active Certainly, it's loud enough that, and it has a good enough tone acoustically, um, that you can take this and practice it in a practice room without an amp and be totally reliant on that tone and plug it in and not have to, not have to really change anything. You know, um, I think, I think it's an excellent, excellent choice for somebody um, who's a guitar major or is moving into the professional area of playing and playing a lot more performances. I think it's, it might be a really good choice as a main guitar. And, uh, that's pretty much the highest compliment I can give for something. Cause I'm very much a tool guy. I have, uh, I have a lot of guitars. Uh, oh man, I don't want to show them. Uh, you can't even see half of them. I have an entire, I have a giant loft full of guitars, man. I have a lot of guitars and I've owned twice as many guitars as I have now. Um, and I have that many because I look at guitars as tools. You pick the tool to do the right job. This is a tool that's designed to do one particular job really well, which is play some loud classical guitar. And that's what I got this, uh, that's what I got this guitar to do. Um, but I think it could actually work well outside of that role too. And that's a, that's a pretty big compliment. So overall, I do recommend it if you are looking for to meet those solutions, to meet that um, amplified guitar solution. And I will be hopefully demoing another solution soon um, that you can add on to your favorite actually acoustic guitar and have some good, um, get some good use out of. Um, but that's it, that's the uh, Godin Grand Concert. And that means it's got the full width nut. Uh, duet ambiance, uh, that means it's got this preamp and it's a multi-act, which, which is their series of um, hollow body 
electric classical and electric acoustic guitars. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great, great day and hope you've had a great Christmas and all of that. This was my sort of Christmas present to myself a little bit early and um, really, really happy with it and looking forward to uh, getting to do more gigging on it and having a lot more fun with this guitar. So thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my websites, dvspress.com, davidbstewart.com. You can find me on Facebook at um, David Van Dyke or uh, Facebook.com slash David Van Dyke Stewart or Twitter at um, at David B. Stewart. Okay. And uh, let me play some more of the piece that I kind of started with, which is a Reginald Smith Brindle piece that you guys might find interesting. Um, and uh, I'll be doing a full video of this one later. But just to give you an idea, I chose this piece because it has a really uh, a sound of an acoustic guitar. It's a very subtle piece, but when you amplify it now, people can really hear it um, without having to kind of sit in a quiet room to hear something uh, that's intended to be very reflective and beautiful. So this is Fantasia One. One more thing I will say about this guitar that I forgot to, to say in the um, in the main part of the video. Because it is a piezo guitar, you're going to get a little more string noise. So uh, hopefully you're practicing to avoid that string noise, but that string noise will come out a little bit louder than it would um, in a normal guitar range. But even with the mic modeler, you're going to get a little more string noise on the bass strings. So be aware of that whenever you buy um, any kind of acoustic electric guitar, you're going to get more string noise than you would if you mic'd the guitar for real out further away. So that's all I have to say about that, and I will see you soon. Have a great one.